The final item of business is members' business debate on motion 10084 in the name of Stuart McMillan on Show Some Heart, the Jaden Orr campaign. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would ask those members who wish to contribute to press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Stuart McMillan to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, Presiding Officer, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone who has supported uh, this motion uh, to allow this debate to take place today. I also want to make members aware that the members of Jaden Orr's family uh, have travelled through to Parliament to be in the public gallery today. Presiding Officer, there can be nothing worse for a parent when they lose a child. It's every parent's worst nightmare. Unfortunately for many families, this becomes a reality and no matter what happens uh, after the passing, it will never bring the child back. Show Some Heart is a campaign established by the Orr family in memory of their precious son, 10-year-old Jaden Orr from Port Glasgow. The Orr family uh, saw their son uh, once again take to the ice to practice his beloved ice skating, not knowing it would be the last time. Jaden loved ice skating. Some youngsters love football, rugby, or one of many other uh, sports available. For Jaden, ice skating was his passion, and he was good at it. Uh, he won uh, many competitions and awards, and he was a hard-working and determined young man wanting to always improve uh, on the ice, and he wanted to be the best. On the 4th of August 2017, Jaden collapsed on the ice and died shortly afterwards. As a result of this tragedy, Jaden's parents bravely uh, wanted to highlight the importance of defibrillator machines and their availability in public places. The Show Some Heart campaign was launched in January this year with a target of reaching £50,000 to fund a defibrillator machine in every school in Inverclyde. I'm fully be behind this campaign, as are the Inverclyde public. The local newspaper, the Gimmick Telegraph, has been instrumental in collating, sorry, in collating aspects of the campaign and I would like to put on record my gratitude to them for that, but also for the sensitive way that they have reported any stories about Jaden and his family and the campaign. Various fundraising activities have already taken place with the opening of a shop in Greenock and the recent charity ball which is held in Greenock Town Hall amongst just two of the examples. So far and since January of this year, £17,000 has been raised in such a short space of time. Local businesses, and the local population have been supportive and I want to thank everyone who has helped so far. When I became involved in the campaign, I undertook some research of my own to fully understand the situation uh, regarding defibrillators in, in Brookwide. And uh, it's clear that there are a few areas that certainly that could be strengthened to help in Brookwide, but also to help every single constituency in Scotland. At present, uh, there is no obligation on a purchaser of a defibrillator machine to register it with the Scottish Ambulance Service. But I can accept that it may, might be difficult for every variant of a, of a defibrillator to be registered. However, there would be a cost also in doing so as investment and the bureaucracy would be required. However, presenting officer, defibrillators can be purchased from normal online websites, so they are not limited to specialist providers. The Scottish Ambulance Service already holds a register of the locations of defibrillators in the country. However, it's not complete. The fact that there is no requirement for them to be registered is a gap in assisting people. In December, I spent a day with the Scottish Ambulance Service and in one of the calls, a defibrillator machine was used beforehand to try to assist. This machine had been registered with the service. So when a member of the public made the call about the ill person, they were directed to the nearest defib machine, which was in the local village hall about 200 metres away. This was then used until the ambulance arrived. Now, whether defibrillator machines are in schools, community halls, shops, or any other public location, having them registered uh, on the Scottish Ambulance Service Register will be hugely advantageous for society. Now, a second issue of note concerns the, the pads that can be used on defib machines. As the Minister will know, uh, there are different pads for adults and children. Although adult pads can still be used on children as a reduced current can be deployed from the defib machine. And I believe it would be beneficial for, in the first instance, greater public awareness about the importance uh, of access to defib machines, but also for each machine to have both adult and children's pads. It's important to consider that on occasions, a person who may use a defib 
until the ambulance arrives, will be a member of the public. And every second counts when it comes to heart failure. So keeping the message simple for a non-professional uh, would be extremely helpful. I was informed also by the Scottish Ambulance Service that uh, adult pads are fine to be used on children. But I appreciate the confusion may arise when a pressure situation, uh, in, sorry, in a pressure situation when a member of the public is trying to help. Uh, the third issue is the importance of uh, defibs and the connections available on the machines. Now, they are not standard, e.g. the pads can be connected to a machine, uh, have a different, may have different connections. If, if there was a standard using, i.e. a USB port uh, or a connection used for headphones, then that could actually be easier for defib owners to replace pads and possibly obtain them at a more reasonable price. And fourthly, uh, and it, it would be remiss of me, Minister, not to uh, put this request uh, to yourself. Um, is there, uh, can the Scottish Government help uh, financially with the campaign? The target is to reach £50,000, and £17,000 uh, has been reached so far. Saying also, the Show Some Heart campaign has highlighted uh, such an important issue that could affect any one of us, any one of our constituents, and also in every single community in the country. It's also highlighted positives about the current process and also the awareness of defib machines. But unfortunately, there are shortcomings in the system. Now, I believe that the Show Some Heart campaign can achieve access to a defib in every local Inverclyde school, but also uh, help to make the current system more robust and better for the country and ultimately our constituents. The campaign wants to introduce a defib into every school uh, locally. It's understandable why this is the aim. Schools tend to be in the heart of local communities and they have large numbers of people gathered for large parts of the day. It makes sense for this to be the aim. In recent years, uh, stories appear which uh, shock the sports world. Uh, when we hear of young sports people collapse and die from heart-related conditions. Uh, it's always a sobering thought. It also highlights that every second counts to try and save their life. Sometimes the first responder will not be a trained person, but a bystander. Therefore, knowing where these machines are is vital. If, when we reach the target locally, and we will reach that target locally, then the public will know that they are in one of the local schools, which may just help to save that life. Uh, okay. David Stewart. Uh, thank the member for giving way. I think he made an excellent contribution in his speech. Would you also uh, uh, join with me in congratulating the work of the British Heart Foundation, who funded over one and a half thousand defibs uh, in Scotland? That's, I think it's a fantastic achievement. Stuart McMillan. Uh, sure, no, absolutely. I, I cannot uh, disagree with uh, uh, David Stewart's uh, contribution there. And I think the, the work of the British Heart Foundation, um, certainly for, some, uh, for many years, uh, has been outstanding. Uh, in Scotland. Presenting also, in conclusion, uh, the strength of the Orr family whilst coming to terms with the tragic loss of their son is immeasurable. However, I believe that their desire to help others not go through the same as they have highlights their character as a family, but also willingness to help others. The family have stated, we want Jaden to live on through helping others. I believe continuing the campaign to reach the £50,000 target to then have a defibrillator installed in every school will be that fitting tribute to Jaden. Thank you. We now move to the open debate. Uh, speeches of around four minutes, please. Miles Briggs to be followed by Joan McAlpin. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I'd like to start by congratulating Stuart McMillan on securing today's uh, members' debate. And I want to put on record both my condolences to Jaden Orr's family on their loss and my praise and admiration for how they're using their own experience of tragedy to take forward to the Show Some Heart campaign to benefit others in their community. The fact we're debating this campaign this evening just goes to show how their campaign has already achieved so much. And I commend their efforts and like Stuart McMillan, wish their campaign every success. I'm delighted as he's mentioned that the Greenock Telegraph is backing their courts. The, social, the Show Some Heart campaigns work in Inverclyde mirrors similar positive efforts in other parts of our country. In my own Lothian region, I was pleased to highlight the excellent work of the Jamie Skinner Foundation, which was established following the tragic death from sudden cardiac arrest of the 13-year-old Tynecastle footballer player Jamie Skinner in 2013. His death shocked the Edinburgh sport and wider community. 
And the foundation has achieved a great deal around raising awareness of the risk of cardiac arrest in young sports people and has already raised a significant amount of money with more than £40,000 being spent on community defibrillators which have, been, which have already made the potential to save people's lives in Lothian. Last year I was pleased to join St John's Scotland, which is based in Edinburgh, in a CPR and defib use training day for members of the public. St John's Scotland helps support the provision of community defibs across Scotland and I'd like to commend their, uh, their work in today's debate. It's St John and the City Public Access Defib Project has helped deliver numerous defibs across our capital city, including in the city's trams and our key tourist attractions. And Stuart McMillan's motion rightly references the importance of registering community defibs um, with the Scottish Ambulance Service. My motion in March um, on the SAS very, very welcome new registration to resuscitation campaign and their new website pad.scottishambulance.com attracted broad cross-party support and I'd again like today to urge any community group that have not yet so registered uh, their defib, their local defibs, to do that on the SAS website so that people know where the nearest defibs are located and to give this information out to the public um, so that the ambulance can be dispatched as soon as possible. Deputy Presiding Officer, I recently met with Mr Phil Mills Bishop, who is the chair of Stonehaven and District Community Council. He's been campaigning, like many people, for more defibrillators to be located in communities in the northeast for a number of years. And Mr Mills Bishop set out a range of concerns in relation to provision of community defibs, citing the fact that more councils still appear unwilling to see them located in public buildings, including schools. He also highlighted to me that his community council has to bear all the associated costs and responsibilities and risks in the location of defibs, including recurring costs with additional pads, as has been mentioned, and sadly fixing defibs after some cases of vandal uh, vandalism. When I met with him, he raised a number of issues around planning regulations and whether changes could be made to remove the need for planning permission for outside uh, locations for defibs in their installation uh, and for that to be covered in permitted development. Now, I've already raised these issues in writing with the Health Secretary, but from what's already been raised in this debate, I, I hope it's something that the Minister will mention in her closing remarks, and it's something I hope at an across-party level we'll be able to take forward because it's so welcome that we're seeing more defibs made available across our communities, but making sure that they're serviced in the future and that we're able to make sure that uh, they're actually, uh, the councils as well are making this as easy as possible as something we clearly need to do. And we clearly need to see best practice, like I've said, spread right across Scotland and any barriers uh, removed. So to conclude, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, I very much welcome today's debate and would like to pay tribute to the work of Show Some Heart campaign. Delivering a defib um, can really help change the outcomes and the possible uh, survival rates to bring them up to as much as 75%. All of us, therefore, are united, I believe, this evening supporting the Show Some Heart campaign and others like it throughout our communities we represent. Their success means greater potential to save lives of people of all ages, and we should all welcome that. Thank you. Call Joan McAlpine to be followed by Neil Bibby. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. I would like to add my congratulations to Stuart McMillan for securing this debate, and I also offer a very war warm welcome to Jaden Orr's family today. This is a heartbreaking story of a 10-year-old boy from Port Glasgow who left the house one evening, seemingly happy, fit and healthy, but never returned home. Jaden, as we have heard, collapsed while ice skating, which is, what is from what is believed may have been a cardiac arrest. And we can only imagine what the Orr family went through the night that Jaden died and what they continue to live with. Jaden, as we have heard, was a talented young ice skater in just four years on the ice. He won countless competitions and was training for the British Championships. His family are rightly very proud of his achievements and determined to honour his memory by campaigning to save as many lives as they can in the aftermath of their own personal tragedy. As we have heard, the family's Show Some Heart campaign aims to raise money to put defibrillators and other life-saving equipment into every school in Inverclyde, which is the area that I come from. Funds will also go towards training people to use the machines properly. Jaden's parents, Kathleen and John, are researching the most suitable child-friendly defibrillators and have secured the support of Northern Rhesus Training to come to Inverclyde to teach local people to use the machines. 
The leisure centre where Jaden collapsed had a defibrillator, but as we have heard, it only had adult pads and the person trained to use it was not there. It is not known whether access to a child-friendly defibrillator would have made a difference for Jaden. However, as Kathleen Orr said after her son's death, none of us know when something is going to happen or when the availability of machine could save a life. As well as raising money to buy equipment, the family want to educate the public about what to do in the event of what is termed an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. Doctors tell us that bystanders, bystander CPR, coupled with the use of a defibrillator, offers the best chances of survival after an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. Every minute without CPR and defibrillation reduces someone's chances of survival by 10%. So in 2015, the Scottish Government published a national strategy to increase survival rates by ensuring the public are both equipped with CPR skills and enabled to use a public access defibrillator until the emergency services arrive at the scene. It's worth noting also that there are many tools available on the internet that the public can utilise to learn how to operate a defibrillator or practice effective CPR. We've heard the British Heart Foundation uh, praised and the British Heart Foundation have created how-to videos lasting just a few minutes. And the Save a Life Scotland site is another great resource that I would recommend. I understand there is strong support locally in Inverclyde for the Orr Families Brave campaign. And I was very pleased to hear uh, Mr McMillan talk about the role of the Greenock Telegraph, the newspaper in which I started my journalistic career many years ago, uh, back in longer ago than I care to remember, actually 1987. And it has backed the family from the beginning and should be commended in particular for the sensitive reporting of this issue. There has been an outpouring of support uh, of people from the uh, of, of support from the people of Inverclyde who have donated generously to the Just Giving campaign set up by Jaden's sister Kerry Lynn to the tune of thousands of pounds. I hope that when Jaden's family leave Holyrood tonight, they will do so in no doubt how much MSPs from across the chamber of all parties admire their strength and back their efforts in this campaign. I call Neil Bibby to be followed by Emma Harper. Thank you, uh, President Officer. In beginning this afternoon, uh, I wish to join Miles Briggs and Joan McAlpine in associating myself with their remarks um, a few moments ago by Stuart McMillan. And I uh, want to congratulate him on securing the debate on this very important campaign. The family of Jaden Orr have shown remarkable strength since he was taken from them. What they have achieved in Jaden's memory is extraordinary. They have mobilised the community. They've been listed the support of their local newspaper, the Greenock Telegraph, and they've won backing in local government, and they're still fundraising and raising awareness about the importance of defibrillators in public places. The Show Some Heart campaign has been inspirational uh, and highlighted such an important issue. Today, that campaign comes to the Scottish Parliament, and I hope that members on all sides will see the importance of installing those life-saving devices in different community settings across the country. Jaden's death at the age of 10 is a poignant reminder that tragedy can strike at any age. That is why among the aims of the campaign is the intention that defibrillators should be located in every school in Inverclyde, but also in leisure centres and other public places. And just as the campaigners want to see more community defibrillators readily available in Inverclyde, they also want to educate people about how to use the devices properly and with confidence. And we must support the Orr, uh, Orr family who are here today to achieve that aim. Because it's not just ambulance crews, as has been said, and trained first aid responders who should have access to a defibrillator and, and who should know how to use the device in an emergency. It's ordinary members of the public too. Because when somebody has a sudden cardiac arrest, quick thinking, bystanders can become lifesavers. Presiding officer, as we've heard, campaigners also want to make sure that where defibrillators are installed, they are registered with the ambulance service. Ambulance control centres will use the information in the public access defibrillator or pad registration system to signpost 999 callers to the nearest device when someone reports a cardiac arrest. According to the Scottish Ambulance Services, the most important factors in determining survival from a cardiac arrest are early high quality CPR and counter shock therapy, more commonly known as defibrillation. 
To survive a cardiac arrest, pac patients will have to receive CPR, and in the majority of cases, they will also require defibrillation. To be successful, both CPR and defibrillation have to be applied within a matter of minutes. Time is always of the essence. That is why these machines have to be readily available, and as Stuart McMillan has said, why their locations have to be recorded on a reliable, uh, up-to-date register. It can make all the difference in an emergency where seconds count. It can save a life. President officer, as Stuart McMillan said, the other main strand to the family's campaign relates to fundraising. Uh, pads cost money. They can cost between £1,500 and £3,000. But what is that in comparison to saving a life? A point made by Jaden's mother, Kathleen, when speaking in support of the campaign. Although the Scottish Government has made a financial contribution in the past, defibrillators are still largely funded through community, charitable or business donations. The family have been crowdfunding, holding tabletop sales, auctions and a charity ball, and they have set up Jaden's Rainbow Charity Shop, a shop that uh, was flooded with donations from ordinary members of the public. They have reached out to the business community, to local councillors, and as I said earlier, they have been working with the Greenock Telegraph to ensure that the campaign is well publicised locally. It has to be said, and other members have mentioned it, that the response to the appeal from the community in Port Glasgow and across the Inverclyde area has been truly impressive. Today's debate is not just an opportunity to recognise the importance of the campaign and all it seeks to achieve, but to recognise the kindness and generosity that have been shown by the people of Inverclyde. They have given their support to this cause, and now I would ask the Scottish Government to consider what further support we can give to them. I would ask the Scottish Government to consider how community action and government action together can expand the availability of this life-saving technology and to consider what more can be done to help ensure that more and more people survive cardiac arrest. Finally, President Officer, let me conclude by commending the Orr family once again for the strength and their persistence in taking forward the Show Some Heart campaign. And let me recognise all that they have achieved to date and all the community in Inverclyde has done to support them from the local newspaper to the council to individual members of the public who have given so generously. Realising the objectives of this campaign will make a difference, and so I wish the campaigners every success in the months ahead. Thank you. Emma Harper, followed by Brian Whittle. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to congratulate my colleague Stuart McMillan for securing this debate and supporting the Show Some Heart campaign. And I would also like to associate myself with the words by my colleagues in chamber this evening and support the family of Jaden for the work that they are doing and the strength in the campaign. Um, 28 years ago, Dr Richard Cummins from Seattle discovered that if a series of events took place in a set sequence, a patient suffering from a heart attack stood a greater chance of survival. And these events are now known as the chain of survival. And the chain is early recognition and call for help, early cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR, early defibrillation, and early advanced care. And this chain leads to more successful survival in hospital. And now, since the advent of community defibrillators, out of hospital survival of persons having a cardiac event, and the chances of survival can be greatly improved. Automatic external defibrillators or public access or even shock boxes, as they're known, are designed to enable non-medical personnel to save lives. And in my previous nursing role, I had an early adopter experience using this technology in early 2000 while working in cardiac and trauma surgery. We would place the pads on a patient's chest for the duration of the surgery, just in case, just in case an arrhythmia occurred. And this was innovative preparation at the time. And it's superb that this technology has the potential to be universally available so that first responders and ordinary folks can contribute to life-saving events. And I welcome and promote this. The Scottish strategy for out-of-hospital cardiac arrest survival rate, which was launched in 2015, and it has since been reviewed, it continues to track patient outcomes and measure of the impact of the current efforts. And it shows that bystander CPR does save lives. Ahead of this debate, I did some research into where the defibrillators are located in the southwest of Scotland. And I spoke to a very helpful local councillor, Ian Howie, who's also a defib trainer. Ian told me about local efforts to acquire and place defibs. 
and both Ian and I, we support the motion wording which asks for the Scottish Ambulance Service registration of defibrillators location so that when emergency 999 is called, the exact place of the closest defib can be relayed to the person. And Stuart McMillan has actually described how this has actually worked when he was with the ambulance uh, on his out visit. So the Heart Safe website, the map on it has two defibs listed in the southwest of Scotland. And this isn't the most up to date, accurate information, because when I looked at it, I actually found there's about 25 defibs located in various places across the southwest of my region including one in St John's town of Dalry in the BT phone box, which was acquired by the public. I found a spreadsheet with 18 listed locally, but only six are registered with the Scottish Ambulance Service. And some of our secondary schools in the south of Scotland region have them, but only four out of the 13 that responded to my inquiry actually have a defib. Dalbeatie High School has one, and last Friday I attended Dalbeatie High School, where the teacher, Mr Alistair Bremner, he's the physics and chemistry teacher, he was coordinating the CPR class. And I attended his BLS, uh, basic life support class, and his CPR, CPR class. There were about 40 young persons learning how to perform chest compressions, rescue breaths, and simulate the defibrilla defibrillator process, and even deliver simulated shocks. Having a defib in school is part of what we need to have to support the learning of the kids. And I think all kids should leave school with basic life support skills. And Alistair Bremner should be commended for his commitment to his pupils obtaining this life skill. A defibrillator is a life-saving machine. For every minute that passes without defibrillation, chances of survival decrease by 10%. Seconds count. Seconds mean a shock can start a heart. Seconds save lives. Presiding officer, I support the motion, not only for Inverclyde schools to have defibs, but all schools and public arenas. And once again, I thank Stuart Macmillan for bringing this debate to chamber, and I commend the strength of the Orr family for this campaign. The last contribution in the open debate is from Brian Whittle. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I join my colleagues in thanking Stuart McMillan for bringing this debate to the Chamber and taking, giving us the opportunity to highlight once again such a hugely important issue. I think it's worth taking a moment to acknowledge the difference between a heart attack and a cardiac arrest as, as the two are often confused. When someone suffers a heart attack, the blood supply to that part of the heart is stopped because of a blockage in a coronary artery which causes part of the muscle to, to, to begin to die. In a cardiac arrest, the whole heart it stops pumping, often because of a problem with the electrical signals which control the heart muscle. Someone having a heart attack may experience the symptoms over a number of hours. They can remain conscious and still have a pulse. Cardiac arrest is sudden and dramatic. A person in cardiac arrest will be unresponsive and usually stops breathing. While these conditions are different, they are closely linked, so, so closely in fact that the measures we take to treat one can often help the other. And of the treatments for heart attack and cardiac arrest, cardiac arrest, a key factor is administrating treatment early, as Emma Hartford has just pointed out. And unless we're extremely lucky, there will always be a gap between someone experiencing a cardiac event and an ambulance arriving. That's why campaigns like Show Some Heart that aim to increase the availability of public access defibrillators are so important. For patients who have a cardiac arrest outside of a hospital setting, Receiving good quality CPR and defibrillation within minutes can mean the difference between survival and death. In fact, for every minute that passes after a cardiac arrest without defibrillation, a patient's chances of survival decreases by as much as 10%. The advent of automatic external defibrillators means that in an emergency, anyone, even if they have no medical knowledge at all, can provide defibrillation to someone in a cardiac arrest and potentially save their life. Across the country, we're seeing more and more public access defibrillators being installed as the public catch on to the fact that these devices can make all the difference in an emergency. And while we're unlikely to get to a point where there's a PD PAD on every street corner, the more of them that are available, obviously, the greater the chance of there being one nearby when it's needed. That's why commitments from nationwide businesses like ASDA to provide defibrillators and CPR trained staff in stores can make such a difference. Even so, there will always be places where another defibrillator could be useful, particularly in more rural areas where it can take longer for help to arrive. 
Ensuring as many people as possible have the opportunity to learn basic CPR makes a huge difference to the chances of someone who survives a heart attack or cardiac arrest. Whether it's through for, uh, formal first aid courses in schools or workplaces or media campaigns that can give a person the basics. They often say knowledge is power. Here it can mean life too. By knowledge, but knowledge on its own is not enough. With that knowledge must come the confidence to use it. And that confidence comes from campaigns like this one, campaigns that make CPR and PADs less alien and unfamiliar and reassure people that trying to help is always better than not. In closing, Deputy Presiding Officer, I, I too would like to take a moment to pay tribute to the Orr family and the work they have done to create and drive their Show Some Heart campaign. The loss of a family member is always devastating, but so much so, more so when that family member is so young. And as Stuart McMillan has said, Jaden was a young man seemingly so fit and healthy, pursuing an enthusiasm for sport. To come through that kind of tragedy and then choose to campaign in the hope of sparing others from the same loss is a true show of strength and determination. I wish their campaign every success and hope it can serve to encourage other councils, businesses, clubs and venues across Scotland to install their own public access defibrillators and help to prevent such a tragedy happening again. Deputy Presiding Officer. I now call Aileen Campbell to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And like others, I'm also grateful to Stuart McMillan for bringing uh, this motion to the Parliament this evening. And I also welcome Jaden Orr's family to the Chamber. I cannot imagine the pain that they have gone through after losing their precious wee lad all too soon. And I, like others, pay tribute to them and all of their family for their strength and their courage that has enabled them to campaign in Jaden's name through Show Some Heart. The level of support for this campaign, whether that's been in Inverclyde area or MSPs tonight, shows just, as Joan McAlpin says, how much admiration we all have uh, for the, the Orr family and all that they have done to raise awareness and ensure that people who need help are responded to uh, timely. The campaign, as others have outlined, aims to raise public awareness of the importance of defibrillators, make more available and register them with the Scottish Ambulance Service. And all of these are important in saving more lives. Using a defib and starting CPR are the key factors in determining survival when someone has an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. And this is the reason they are the early priorities in the out-of-hospital cardiac arrest strategy for Scotland. And it's in this context that I want to base some of my responses to the points raised uh, tonight. We launched the strategy in 2015 with a commitment to improve survival and outcomes from out of hospital cardiac arrest and get more people home to their families. This involves improving the whole system of care, termed the chain of survival that comprises, as Emma Harper uh, outlined in her remarks, early recognition that someone has had a cardiac arrest and calling 999 for help. CPR by the people present, early use of a defibrillator where that's available, rapid access to high quality resuscitation care by emergency services and clinicians, post resuscitation care in hospital and aftercare. Now all of those elements must be optimised to improve outcomes from a cardiac arrest. And we know that rapid bystander action as uh, Neil uh, Bibby I think uh, made, uh, made, mentioned earlier on that rapid bystander action, calling 999, starting CPR and using an available defib in the minutes immediately following a cardiac arrest is where the greatest gains in survival will be achieved. Starting CPR keeps a person alive, buying time until medical help arrives. CPR is a life-saving skill that practically anyone can learn and that is why we launched Save a Life for Scotland, the partnership of blue light and voluntary sector organisations working to encourage people to learn CPR and raise awareness and willingness to intervene at a cardiac arrest. The Save a Life for Scotland partnership is a unique model building on strong foundation of existing work by services, communities and individuals right across the country. And since 2015, Save a Life for Scotland partners have worked with schools, they've worked with community and sports groups in workplaces, public places and at major events to equip over 200,000 people with CPR skills. And that's a great achievement and we want to acknowledge the work of all the partners involved and thank all those people who said, I'll do it and learn how to save a life. And a priority for Save a Life for Scotland is working with schools to support CPR learning. 
Under Curriculum for Excellence, schools have the flexibility to provide emergency or first aid training, and it's up to individual schools and local authorities to decide if and how best to provide CPR learning opportunities within the curriculum. In many schools across Scotland, CPR training is already embedded with support from uh, Save a Life for Scotland partners such as the British Heart Foundation, St Andrew's First Aid, the British Red Cross, the Royal Life Saving Society and Lucky to Be Here. Save a Life for Scotland has worked with Education Scotland also to develop resources for schools and these are available on Education uh, Scotland's GLOW website and that is delivering our aim of making CPR learning easy, accessible and free. The bystander uh, CPR keeps a person alive in those crucial minutes until a defibrillator can be used. And defibrillation works with CPR and is most effective the earlier it is performed. And it's on that basis that we very much welcome Show Some Heart, the Jaden Orr campaign's aim to increase public awareness and availability of defibrillators in Inverclyde. And I'll certainly instruct my officials to meet with Stuart and the campaign in the first instance to explore ways in which uh, Show show some heart campaign can work alongside our current approaches to make sure that we can complement the work and effort that's going on and make sure that we can uh, maximise the reach that uh, both our campaigns seek to have to ensure more people uh, can be benefited from uh, the outcomes of these uh, efforts. And like other MSPs, I want to take this opportunity to show my appreciation to the communities, the voluntary organisation, the businesses that have fundraised to purchase defibrillators, often making them publicly accessible across Scotland. And I recognise the role of the British Heart Foundation in making funding available for defibs as part of their commitment to save lives. And last month, we published a guide uh, to public access defibs, which provides practical advice for people who want to install a defib for their local community. Our strategy recognises the importance of defibs and aims to make the most effective use of those that are available. And through this, the Scottish Ambulance Service has established a registration to resuscitation campaign that maps public access defibs into, onto their call handling system. And this means they can direct bystanders to a defib where it's nearby. And through this system, we can improve their use. And I encourage everybody responsible for a public access defib to register it with the Scottish Ambulance Service. Now, a critical part of the ambulance service registration of defibs is also for, the, for a person to be responsible for them and to check them regularly and confirm that they are working, which is absolutely crucial. And again, I hope that this effort to register and to increase the registration gives uh, reassurance, to, reassurance to Stuart uh, McMillan that this is absolutely something that we want to build on to ensure that more people know where these uh, uh, defibrillators are in their community. We've also... Yeah? Stuart McMillan. I thank the Minister for taking the intervention. Just on the issue of the registration with the Scottish Ambulance Service, um, has the Scottish Government considered making the registration a mandatory requirement uh, when uh, a defib machine is actually purchased? Aileen Campbell. We'll certainly continue to work with the Scottish Ambulance Service to make sure that those that are in existence in the here and now do get uh, the registration that's required to make sure that they are very much more uh, visibly aware of those in their communities. And we'll make sure that we continue to keep uh, Stuart McMillan um, updated on the progress in that work because you know, it's not just the registration, it's also making sure people, somebody takes responsibility for them uh, as well, to make sure that they work when somebody has need for them. Uh, and I think that's an important part, point to, 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 to recognise as well. Um, but there has been an upsurge in, in registration and we continue to work with the Scottish Ambulance Service and I think that that's important work to continue. Also in response to some of the points that Stuart McMillan raised, we've also funded the University of Edinburgh Resuscitation Research Group to carry out modelling work to inform advice on where defibs are best located to save lives. And our expert group is also considering the issue that has been raised by Stuart about children uh, and the, their uh, the use of uh, defibs for, for children. So again, I hope that continues to show him that there is continued work to make progress on the issues that he described in his opening remarks. Now, we are starting to make progress in response to our out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. And since the strategy's launch in 2015, the provision of bystander CPR has increased to nearly 50%. And survival has also increased. And in 2016-17, an additional 62 additional lives were saved compared to the previous year. And that's only been possible by the commitment and partnership working by public services, voluntary organisations and communities themselves. Mm -hmm. The generosity of those involved in Show Some Heart, uh, the Jaden Orr campaign, are a valuable part of that collective effort. 
So again, presiding officer, I want to thank the Orr family and friends for their generous work and can ensure them that the memory of Jaden Orr will live on in the continued effort to raise awareness to help others. He sounds like an incredible young lad and we'll certainly look to do all we can to make sure that his experience doesn't go in vain, that we do more to help others across the communities in Scotland. That concludes the debate and the meeting is closed.